Hello everybody and welcome back to the Okami walkthrough. It's time for us to finally properly enter the moon cave. So we just had to do that whole thing in the calcified cavern and now we're in the moon cave shrine, so to speak. And as you can see there's quite a lot of levels to this and it's a pretty hefty dungeon to be honest. So if we speak to this imp here, he's talking about an appetizer, which is human sacrifice. <sighs> so we've got a little bit of time, it seems, before everything's okay. But what I really like is that they've called that thing the Epicurean Bell. <laughs> So, if you want to know what Epicurean is, it's based on Epicureanism, which is a philosophy based upon the teachings of the ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus, which was founded in 307 BCE. Basically, his, he was an atomic materialist, or that's how we describe it now, and this led to a general attack on superstition and divine intervention. So... Yeah, and it's also believed that what he called pleasure was the greatest good, but the way to attain pleasure was to live modestly and to gain knowledge of the workings of the world and limit one's desires. It's not quite what the folks here in the Moon Cave are going on about, but basically it's... Uh, well, it it's a form of hedonism in that it's all about doing stuff for yourself. But either way, we've just saved the chef. Because he was having a little bit of trouble there. Right, so, I believe, I'm not 100% sure about this, but thanks to a wonderful thing called Lang8 that I've randomly found on Google and don't know whether I trust or not, um, a genie apparently means sampling in Japanese. And the answer that somebody gave to somebody's question about a genie is that while you're preparing your dishes, you do a genie by tasting a bit of it to make sure that it is what you wanted. So, basically, the guy's name is Sampler. Because he is constantly doing the Ajimi with his food, and he, in doing so, fell into the food. So I'm sure a little bit of uh, boiled imp juices will be absolutely lovely for o Orochi. I'm sure he's going to love that. But he has set us upon a quest to get the ingredients for the appetizer. Because... reasons. Obviously it's because he needs help and he thinks that we are an imp, therefore he's asking us to help stuff. But also, technically, we're not helping things out particularly well, because obviously, the sooner we do this, the sooner Kushi's gonna get eaten. So... Uh, it depends where you roll with things. But what this dungeon basically introduces us to is the upside down Konohana Blossom which are kind of evil because obviously you can't land on them so you've got to kind of leap across very very quickly to the next one before anything goes south but it's just like it's evil. <laughs> it's not particularly difficult though. The only thing that you've got to make sure to look out for is your ink pots. Because they can go down very, very quickly if you are not careful. Also, we get introduced to these switches. Not particularly hard for the first one, it's just slash the eye. But they're going to get a little bit more difficult later on. Now, I'd say the worst 
thing about the moon cave is that so you go to loads of different rooms and you're kind of trying to make your way up but it is actually surprisingly easy to get lost it's kind of a basically because of where certain levels come out it kind of sometimes it's difficult to remember where exactly you need to be going I mean, especially considering they don't really give you any clues as to the direction that you need to go. But thankfully, we have found the Ogre Liver. Sorry, Shrek. I wonder if it's like an onion. Because obviously, ogres have layers. So I wonder if Ogre Livers have layers as well. Probably. Now, I think I was being a right daredevil there. It was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna completely skip numerous Honohana Blossoms because I'm just that badass. He says, being completely stupid <laughs> and trying to sound more badass than he actually is. <laughs> So having done that, we now have the ability to water spout up here. And we can progress through the dungeon. And I believe we're going to come out kind of at the top of the next level, which is quite nice. Now that treasure chest there is going to be waiting for us and taunting us for quite a while. There's stuff that you can get in the moon cave. There are clovers. There are treasure chests. I'm pretty sure there is at least one stray bead or two. And the majority of them sit in this main room. But they only unlock after certain points in the game. It's kind of annoying. But it happens. Now I believe that we need to go through this door, and I am indeed correct. But we can't actually get any further, which is rather annoying. And we go boom into this, which just means, yay, more demon gates to destroy. But as you can see up there, there was, we don't have the ability to use fire at the minute. We have water, we don't have fire. So I wonder what we're going to unlock in this particular dungeon, eh? <laughs> That's it, I am incredibly proud of my battling abilities so far in this dungeon because I'm loving all those cherry blossoms it, it's it's good for the soul <laughs> and now which looks quite odd is that we get use of a puzzle that I didn't think would ever actually return which is making use of the bamboo things there's quite a lot of kind of puzzles in Okami that actually surprisingly don't return Because there's a lot of unique stuff that goes on in each dungeon, which is fine, as it should be, really. But... It's still just like... was not expecting Bamboo to return at all. Also, I love how, like, the imps are terrified of Orochi, and that's basically why they do what they do. It's because they don't want to get eaten themselves, not necessarily because they are evil, which is kind of a nice touch, because although they're still despicable creatures, there's something almost human in them, which kind of gives a sort of interesting facet to the characterization of demons in the game. 
because as you're going to see, like the big monsters are not humanized at all. They are kind of entirely demonized, and there's a good reason for that because you know they are evil beyond every inch of the word. But the actual imps that we're fighting ourselves, like just the, the basic demons. Bath like the ones that never speak to us. We have all the people here which Well, they just wanna work, really. They just want to get through without getting into any trouble, which I think we can all kind of understand. And I believe I'm being a little bit of a numpty at present. It's very easy, as I said, to get lost, but it's also very easy to forget exactly where you need to go, or which direction, and oh, it's a pain. But seeing as we've now managed to get up to that first top level, we can now get back up much easier by using that particular flower. And I believe I'm now going to attempt to be an idiot and try and get across to that treasure chest. It's not happening. You need the brush god power for the dungeon to be able to get it. But that's exactly what we are going to kind of be heading towards to get. Oh, um, I think we're going to disturb you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and we are probably going to be absolutely mean by doing it. So yes, you just need to keep slashing your way down. I believe you can headbutt him if you want, but power slashing is probably your best way through. Now, the reason for that wonderful little crossfade there, if you noticed it at all, you most likely did, is because I got all the way to the bottom of this and then you know couldn't see where I needed to go and fell into the acid that's at the bottom which you should not be falling into because it's bad and is going to send you right back up to the top then you need to wait for the imp to slowly bring himself back up and then you need to slash your way back down again so in the grand scheme of things I won't make you sit through that it was just gonna be an absolute waste of time But we have some more switches and some more imps to defeat, so it's all good. Now, I'd say that's actually something that I've never seen happen. If you kind of ink up your enemies, then they will sometimes just randomly try and attack you. That may just be a thing of the blue imps to do that. I'm not 100% sure, but either way. So with these witches, it's basically, you've got to get all of them at once, or at least all of them within a relatively tight time frame. But, oh, there's a nice statue here. I wonder if it's going to be actually quite useful to us. But, here we have, I believe it's the Ice Slips. There are a particular family of enemies in this game, and they can be infuriating. At the minute, we actually are going to struggle to do much against this guy. You can use Gale Storm to get rid of the ice, which you are going to want to do, for the love of God. And then a Power Slash when they're in the day state can be incredibly helpful. But we don't have their Floral Finisher just yet, which is really annoying. And it's going to be the case for quite a lot of the enemies that we're going to be facing from this point onwards. We simply just aren't going to have the floral finishes, so you won't be able to get any until later on. With the wheel monster family, which is what that ice slips is from, uh, basically the artist drew these guys in one go. They are demons with a human anatomy theme. But... 
We've got this statue here that is burning, like, insanely. And another constellation has appeared. Oh, yes! And so, here we have Moegami, who is the god of the Inferno, I think. So, the name, it's Moe, which is derived from Moeru, which means to burn. So, Moegami is the burning god. Now, obviously, because it's all of the brush gods are designed on the East Asian Zodiac. Moegami is based on the rooster. But in terms of actual design, he's more a hybrid of a forest fowl and an albatross with the extended wingspan. The tail is also really unusually long, which is similar to Onagadori chickens, which are a particular Japanese breed. Um, but also, while Moegami is closely related to the phoenix, which is also what Isun was mentioning, the appearance may have been altered from the angelic light chicken, the Sarama chickens, which have an unusually regal-shaped body and stand like a human, and their tail and wings exceed their body size maybe up to kind of twice as much or something along those lines. Also with Moegami is he carries a Japanese smoking pipe which is a kisuru which is made of lacquered wood and capped with brass on both ends and has oil paint decorations of a burning fire and a spiralling gust of wind. So yeah, there's quite a lot about Moegami to sound that I really really like. But we also have the power of the Inferno, which means that we can now use fire at win, well, at will. So we can just draw lines from any fire source and melt things, which is going to be an absolute godsend to us. Because it is going to allow us to progress. Particularly in this room, you know, with all of this ice. But first, I think we should probably take on this demon gate. Which has two of these ice lips. Now, as I said, we didn't have these guys' floral finisher before, but I'm pretty sure that now we do. Don't be an idiot like me and power slash them than that, but do make use of fire, because they are incredibly weak to it, and will give you demon fangs upon floral finishing them. So it's certainly worth your while. And we get the Lips of Ice. Which is another of the ingredients that we were required to pick up, so we're making good progress. And now, quite randomly, we're back in the kitchen. I quite like that we've sort of just looped all the way around and now, because we have the power to burn, we can actually progress further up the entire dungeon, which is really, really nice. We still can't get that damn chest just yet, because we need to do a little something else before we can get a fire source down here. But upon completing and getting the ice, lips of ice, we've got a clover! It gives us 30 praise, which is like, that's a lot. 
for a clover, and they will gradually increase in terms of the amount of praise that they will give us, depending on their location and how difficult they are to get, really. Now, if I recall correctly, we are probably going to get another of the items in this part, and then the final one will be picked up in the next one. I can't quite remember the full specifics. But... We are kind of doing, well, making really good progress in here. And I really do mean that, like, we're going quick. And now here we have the, f I believe it's the fire eye. Obviously because it's an eye wheel on fire. Now, what's really, really, really cool is that you can actually use enemies against each other. So you can use the flames of the ice mirror, well, the, the fire mirror, to floor or finish the ice mirror. Well, lips of ice. The fire eye... You get the gist. Also, as you can see, I have actually maxed out my pouch. So I'm not getting any more money from this stuff. Which is not good. It's not going to do me any harm in, in the long run. And also, surprisingly, we actually have the floral finisher for these guys. It's just Gale Storm. So, that's actually surprisingly helpful. And for that, we obtain the Eyeboil... Eyeboil? Eyeball of Fire. I'm just making all of the word flubs today, aren't I? <laughs> Now, because I am blind as a bat, I am not going to realise that, you know, my pouch is as full as it is, so yeah, you're going to see me do something rather embarrassing, I believe, at the end of the part. Really frustratingly, we can't do anything there for now, so we will have to backtrack in the next part to get anywhere. But as you can see, Orochi is really, 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 really not happy. So, we best be hurrying, otherwise Kyushi is incredibly screwed. And now we get to a sand room, which reminds me that this is easily my least favourite room in the entirety of this dungeon. Because what better, well, what two things are best to put together? If you answered quicksand with pits and ball pushing physics, you've got a hole in one as to why I absolutely despise this room. So we're in the school dunes and there is a ball that we need to push. But, uh, I hate it. Because while this thing will move sort of reasonably, it's just frustrating. Especially considering there is this massive gap here, which you can tell that there is a pathway to cross, because I mean, why wouldn't there be? But you have to kind of use like Gale Storm or whatever to get the path to make itself clear. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing right now, I'm just making sure that I've collected everything on the path before trying to move the absolute goddamn ball. But once that is done, we will be having to struggle our way down. 
But first, if we fall down this particular hole, we will end up in the underbelly of the moon caves. Sand dunes? Basically, the reason you're going to want to do that is because it allows you to get a little something. Which is this particular chest, which is a treasure. So, mm, depends if you want to waste your time for a pearl or not. I mean, it gives you money, so why the hell not? And also, when you come back up, you are pretty much exactly where you left off. So, makes things actually quite nice and simple for you. And, oh, finally we have the Moon Cave map, even though we are kind of... I suppose maybe about halfway, a bit over halfway through, so it's not that bad. What is bad, however, is this. Because you have to headbutt it, and that is your only way of moving this thing. Because it's so heavy! Yay! Thankfully it does reset every time you knock it over a ledge. But it will always reset back to, I believe, this point. So... Yeah, it's just much more effort than it's worth. And the frustrating thing is that this is completely compulsory because it's the only way that you're going to be able to progress throughout the dungeon, so... Ugh. I really, really hate the ball pushing physics in this game. Obviously, the worst instance of that is the sleepy side quest, but... This is pretty much a close second for really, really irritating ball pushing side quests, even though this is part of the main quest. You get what I mean. Thankfully, once you get it to this particular point, you're essentially in the clear. It's just a case of getting your positioning down to, you know, get the ball in the hole. And doing that lights up these torches, which thank god means that we can, one, get that treasure chest that's been eluding us all dungeon, but also we can progress further in other locations. And what I am going to do right now is be a bit of an idiot in my dealings with the imp merchant, because I still don't realise that my pouch is full, and I am an idiot. <laughs> But we are going to purchase numerous lard bones and stuff and then be an idiot by wasting a lot of my treasures when I don't need to. Oh well. <laughs> 